meeting for April 24th, 2023. Uh, have a roll call, please. No, the pledge, I'm sorry. We'll do it. Yeah. Join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And a uh, quick roll call, please, Carol. Uh, being honest. Jim Batson. Here. Kara Benjamin. Here. Don Carmichael. Here. Kara Drumkey. Here. Lisa Hessel. Here. Sonal Kokarni. Here. Casey Rooney. Here. Okay, thank you. Um, and uh, we'll review the agenda, but I want to start off by wishing Denise Herman, Dr. Herman, a happy birthday. It's her birthday today. So. Thank you, Jim. Had to get in, add in there somewhere. Uh, we're going to re review the agenda here real quick. Um, we'll start out with uh, student recognition, uh, invitation for public comment. Uh, we'll have uh, student school board uh, representative reports. We have a few FOIA requests, some additional good news from Dr. Herman. We'll move on with our consent vote agenda, which are items that are typically uh, uh, voted on by us and reviewed in committee earlier in the month. Uh, then action items, including an intergovernmental agreement uh, with the Village of Libertyville, our 2023-24 textbook adoptions, uh, a new online learning platform, uh, administrative contracts and amendment, amendments, I can speak, uh, annual education support staff uh, staffing report, uh, annual education support staff salary rate recommendations, um, employment of employees, a 2324 proposed committee and board meeting schedule, uh, budget adoption timeline, a very aggressive one, very impressive. Uh, disposal of equipment, bid recommendations for uh, uh, some work at Libertyville, a proposed asbestos abatement for Libertyville High School as well, bid recommendations for uh, parking lots. We move on for a discussion item with the uh, D128 behavior and discipline presentation, which we look forward to. And then some informational items, the superintendent's report, board comments and events for the month, uh, IASB report, which uh, I, I won't have anything to report on that. Uh, we have CEDAW, anything for that, Kara? Okay, we won't have anything there. Any opportunity for any other reports, discuss of future agenda items, and we will move to adjourn this regular board meeting. Uh, immediately following that, we will, uh, uh, do a special board meeting where we will reorganize the board. We will take the oath of office for the, the board members that were newly elected and go through that whole process. So that's a separate meeting that'll happen after this whole agenda that I just described. So um, unless there's some corrections or concerns from any of the board members, we will move on. Um, first up is student recognition. Good evening, I'm Tom Kalentis, principal at Libertyville High School. And we have two student groups uh, that we're going to celebrate and honor this evening. Um, I'm first gonna see if the uh, coach here is here from the academic decathlon team. <coughs> Busing in the house. All right, Mr. Busing is not in the house. Um, so I'm gonna call up the students and I don't necessarily see them, but um, we will go quickly. If they're here, come on up. If they're not, we will just hold our applause till the end. Uh, Josiah Abraham, he took 10th in the state. Our academic decathlon team took 10th in the state this year. Uh, Sean Hoke, Maya Hoffman. These students are intensely committed to their studies as academic decathlon. They're home doing homework. <laughs> Sarah Jacobs. And Jasper Wexler. 
I will make sure they get their certificates. Thank you for um, celebrating their accomplishment, 10th and state. And our second group that we are recognizing is our IHSA state, well, our LHS debate team was a quarter finalist in the state debate tournament. They did an outstanding job. And I know Sarah Greenswag is here. Any other coaches here tonight? Yeah. Just you, come on up. Okay. All right. And um, if you'd like to say a couple words about the team, and then we have two students. Uh, yeah, so I've been coaching debate at Libertyville since I started at Libertyville. So it's my 10th season. And in my coaching career, this is the most success we've ever had. Um, at this level of competition. And we're so proud of this public forum team. So public forum debate is like two versus two. They're deeply committed to researching a topic. Our topic at the state tournament this year was, sounds niche, but it was actually so interesting. It was whether or not India should join the Artemis Accords, which is a international US led uh, space initiative to try to get people on the moon and then mine on the moon and eventually get people to Mars. And um, our team's just did an incredible job uh, prepping this year. And I also just want to commend um, both Alex Clark and his partner, Mia, who is not here um, on all their leadership on the team this year, the way they help uplift our novices and are, we're really building a good foundation for the future. So we're so proud of what they did and what our team will continue to do in their footsteps. So Alex Clark. And we Okay, congratulations to all those students. Um, um, moving on, uh, we have an invitation for public. Everybody, we have a three minute uh, limit for each presenter to, uh, to comment, uh, and we try to stick to that as much as we can. Um, someone's, I think someone's. Do we have any? Carol's going to go check. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> He's good, all right. Okay, we have uh, Tim Akers uh, would like to speak. Good evening. My name is Tim Akers. I am an ESP staff member at Liberty Bell High School. Um, as you are aware, on April 19th, the educational support professionals of District 128 filed to form a union with the Illinois Educational Labor Relations Board. We are excited about this step to share this news with our school board, our administration, and our constituents in the spirit of transparency and collaboration. Though we are excited, this step comes after years of not being heard, being overlooked, and our hard work not being valued. The SPs of District 128 felt that this was a necessary step that we needed to take to address these issues. As we take our seat at the table, we look forward to the opportunity that this provides us to improve the staff, staff retention by addressing issues like workload, clear job descriptions, compensation, and job security. We have dedicated ourselves to enhancing students' educational experiences and assisting, to, and assisting to make this district one of the top in the nation. We will remain dedicated to ensure that all staff members are supported and dedicated to creating a safe environment so that the education process will continue to thrive and our students at District 128 will continue to receive a high quality education and care. 
We hope that our partnership can increase the value and the retention of such a vital foundation of our school communities. We value this opportunity to sit at the table and collaborate with you in the near future. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak at this time? That was all for who signed up, but anyone else cares to speak? Okay, well, thank you. Uh, well, moving on to the next item, um, and that would be the student school board representative reports. So I'll turn it over to you guys. Hi, good evening. It's a pleasure to be here tonight. Um, as the year comes to an end, the class of 2023 is finally ready to close their high school chapter and to begin a new one. Some traditions also are carried on, like our ABC countdown. Some examples include G, which was grout fit, in which everyone showed up in gray for, in spirit. <laughs> some uh, Another one was C, which was Celebrity Day, and we saw some Guys and girls dress up as Pitbull, Steve Harvey, and the Kardashians. Student Council is entering our last season of the year, Celebrate, which encompasses teacher, wildcat, and senior appreciation. Some of our ideas include fun surprises for the teachers, so stay tuned for those. But we also have gift, gifts at graduation rehearsal and free Kona ice on Friday for K, since that's the letter on Friday. <laughs> Seniors are also enjoying our annual water gunfight, or as we call it, senior assassin. Um, each one of us gets assigned a target, and we have to get them out by the end of the week, or we become everyone else's target, which is like on bounty board, so anyone can get you. And if you wear your floaties or your goggles, you're safe. <laughs> I right here. <laughs> but, um, personally, I'm still in, and Sarah's still in. Jazzy got out last night. And it was a big betrayal. She was really upset. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, additionally, seniors are looking forward to May 5th, which is our decision day this year, as we get to wear a college merch and just like have a big like photo session and photo op organized by our CRC. And honestly, I don't know about you, but if you follow the LHS CRC on Instagram, you've seen those commitment posts going up. And I get excited every time I refresh it to see a new one. So definitely seeing that also in real life is something we're all looking forward to. And finally, um, students are getting ready to interview and find out about leadership positions for next year. And last week, Sarah, uh, Jazzy and I got to sit in on the interviews for the board reps for next year. And honestly, I was so impressed by everyone's talent and dedication to our school. So I can't wait to find out who's going to represent LHS next year. Thank you. Um, so a student-led kind of event that happened a couple weeks ago was a student-led walkout during second period honoring the victims of the recent school shooting in Nashville, Tennessee. Upwards of 300 students gathered in the faculty parking lot for a six-minute moment six minute moment of silence. Seniors Paige, Regan, Leah Trudy, and I led the walkout to make a statement against gun violence and give students an outlet to honor those who lost their lives, along with a place to go and share their support in a safe way. And although not endorsing the walkout in any way, LHS administration and the safety team were informed and issued information regarding the walkout. In fine arts news, the Northern Regional Art Exhibition was held at the Bridgeport Art Center in Chicago this past Sunday. Caitlin Mitchell received a gold award for her designs and Roe Potsick received an honorable mention for her woodlock, woodblock print. Caitlin and Sam Chen also received recognition for being in the top 20 scholarship money recipients based on senior portfolios. So at the show, there was a cool event called the Art Throwdown and senior Elias Aziri joined 30 other participants to complete a 90 minute figure drawing from a live model. And he actually received first place and he won $100 for his drawing um, that he drew with mechanical pencil. And uh, I interviewed him. He says, believe it or not, it felt good to win. And I was pretty happy, he <laughs> said. <laughs> and he was grateful to buy new art supplies with his prize money. 
Additionally, the North Suburban Conference Art Show awarded um, our top 10 pieces to, uh, and that was awarded to Ella Diamore, Sailor Zamansky, Rebecca Benton, Lou Metalenko, Arwen Tar Townander, Nick Tyler, Elena Weiss, Abby Hayes, Shreya Mukpadahaya, Sarah Wu, that's me, and Angela Xiao. Um, and on these art students' rec recent recognitions, art teacher Ray Gossel emphasized the excellence of the art department at LHS and its ability to give resources to students to create and grow as artists. We have the freedom to create stuff much stronger than typical high schoolers. We create by pushing students not to be afraid to make mistakes and grow, Mr. Gossel said. And as an art student, I can speak on behalf of all visual art students and fine arts probably when I say thank you for prioritizing the arts just as much as the athletics in our district. Um, as for the general student body, underclassmen and juniors are gearing up for final season while seniors are wrapping up their loose ends and looking forward to the next chapter of our lives. On finals, freshman Ash Magala Hayes said, finals are super stressful and um, providing review materials for classes is definitely very helpful. And there's a different level of stress in classes that don't have those review materials. Um, junior sentiment that has been heard around the school is just want to sleep. I am hungry. <laughs> um, and some people with borderline grades as finals come up are feeling a little bit stressed, but people are really looking forward to small things in a day, like the new smoothie bar we have at our school, which uh, people are a big fan of. And also going on various field trips, like the physics classes have a field trip to Six Flags, which people are really looking forward to. So general consensus is that as the school year is wrapping up, tensions are high and stressful, but that's expected. And it's like nice to have little things to look forward to during the stressful time. Um, Her phone's in front of you, Jane. There you go. Quick save. <laughs> Um, I wanted to address one of the um, great things that just happened in the district, which is math team just won third place at overall at state senior. Senior Omar Mahmoud ranked eighth place individually and freshman Shub Varshni and freshman Eddie Lee both placed as well as sophomore Ahan Day. Um, a quote from Sean Hoke, who's one of the seniors on math team. He said, our hard work throughout the year paid off and we were able to do well at state. I'm glad that I was able to go since my freshman year, it was canceled. And I know that the sentiment among a lot of seniors, especially um, not just those in math team, considering that our freshman year, a lot of our activities got cut short. So it was really great to see my friends on math team finally getting to have, go to state and not only go, but also place third. Mm -hmm. um, as well as that, go, going along the theme of um, juniors taking on the new senior leadership roles, NHS, the National Honor Society induction was last Wednesday, the 19th. To qualify, members had to have at least a 3.75 GPA and as well as complete the application. And this actually marks a change from before when the minimum GPA was only 3.5. So they've moved up the requirements, which led to a smaller pool of people getting it. Um, Patrick Compare, who's the secretary of um, NHS, currently stated the event went without a hitch except for one faulty electric handle. It was bittersweet to see juniors I know get the recognition they deserve while also knowing it heralded the end of my experience in NHS. A, so, a junior who was just inducted named Caroline Scott um, also mentioned being inducted into NHS felt like the culmination of all the work I've done and the things I've accomplished through my years at LHS thus far. One thing both juniors and seniors have been looking forward to is prom coming up this year. It'll be held at Stonegate in Hoffman Estates on May 20th, which is the day after seniors' last days of school. So maybe this time we won't have prom at an anime convention again, not that that didn't add some fun to things. <laughs> <laughs> the theme this year is Old Hollywood, roll out the carpet. So that'll be really fun, and I'm really excited to see the decorations that are put up. Um, it's actually kind of different this year than before since it's based on since how you register is based on bus number instead of registering with a table like how it was in years past and the tables are fluid so you can just sit down at whatever table you want to once you get there so that's a change from before so we'll have to see how that turns out and if that's something that we're going to stick with but um, I know that I personally as well as a lot of my friends are really excited for our last ever dance at LHS before and also a great way to end our school year since it's really the day after it ends. Going along the same vein, 
preparations for graduation have begun. Um, they just sent out the form for the graduation party open to all seniors at pinstripes for after graduation. So that'll be a fun way to bond with our classmates for hopefully not the last time um, after we graduate. Um, as well as that seniors where any senior was able to submit graduation speeches that they want to give and two seniors are supposed to be chosen for that. I know Fatima, Sarah and I all applied and we are anxiously awaiting when they will come out. Um, all in all, it's really bittersweet to be having these like plans for high school, especially writing my speech, reflecting on these last four years. But I mean, it's I'm really excited for the next chapter. And it's just insane that we only have four weeks left of high school. Um, and finally, Sarah and I did a visit at Vernon Hills High School. We went through classes there for a day along with the Vernon Hills board representatives. It was so much fun and it was really cool to see just like the little differences like there's carpeting in these hallways there isn't carpeting at LHS. Um, and also the openness of the cafeteria we thought that was really cool how it was a lot more open instead of closed off and the way that the food lines work where it is also just more open as opposed to LHS being inside of little rooms. And there was also a lot more like bright or like I don't want to say harsher lighting because it didn't feel harsh lighting in Vernon Hills and it overall this campus had a lot more of a modern feel than LHS but overall they were very similar the teachers were really inviting and seemed really great and all of the students were just so great to talk to and like you could just like strike up a conversation with the person sitting next to you so that was really cool thank you Hello, my name is Hari Jun, and I'm a Vernon Hills High School Board Representative. The month of April has been very eventful. Firstly, orchestra and choir slash theater went on their spring break trip. Orchestra to France and choir to New York. Minus the high stress at baggage claim, students had a fantastic time. Mariana Tuluxing, a freshman in concert choir, noted how special it was to work with Broadway actresses with her school in a fine arts program. The most memorable experience for her was watching Six the Musical, where she was able to see female empowerment on stage. Between waving a hello to Lady Liberty and getting to get a taste of different cultures on the walking food tour, this trip was nothing short of a memorable experience. Congratulations to the cast and crew of the spring play, The Complete Works of William Shakespeare, Abridged, Revised, Revised Again, which was performed April 13th through the 15th. Students in the play noted how despite the crazy short rehearsal period of just over a month, it was so rewarding when they knew that they had performed 37 of Shakespeare's plays in 100 minutes. As a senior, closing night was filled with tears and the play marked the end of the class of 2023's theater career at Vernon Hills High School. Furthermore, as the May 1st deadline is fast approaching, many seniors are making their commitments to their schools. Something that seems to be a general consensus is that financial letters are very confusing for both students and parents. Therefore, CRC offered financial aid letter comparison meetings throughout the day on April 11th. Many seniors attended these meetings and got answers to burning questions that they had. Many seniors appreciated this and noted that it, quote, helped them narrow down down narrow down to two colleges and even choose the college that they wanted to attend. <laughs> the civil rights movement was a nonviolent movement in the U.S. From, the from 1954 to 1968 to abolish legalized racial segregation, disenfranchisement, and discrimination of Black Americans. On April 19th, Voices in Harmony and Concert Choir was able to honor the leaders of the civil rights movement. From 7.30 p.m. to 8 p.m., the audience was able to watch the displayed student-created documentaries in the foyer, honoring people that played a significant role in the civil rights movement. The songs that were also sung in the, in the concert composed, were all composed by Black Americans and were songs that were sung during the movement and all throughout enslavement. This concert's theme was different from any other concert before, and it helped to honor and respect the people that integrated the U.S. and displayed resilience, integrity, perseverance, and bravery. Summer is fast approaching, and the seniors are showing their participation in the ABC countdown. Every day a new theme, seniors are showing more enthusiasm for this countdown than studying for AP tests, <laughs> which I have to say is justified. On the topic of seniors, many are participating in the senior water gun game, a game with the objective of getting someone out with a water gun. 
This year's senior game adapted a few new rules, including one that established the school as a zone where the game could not be played. Senior Jenna Sala, who manages the game, noted how for the most part, everyone has been a good follower of the rules and how entertaining it is to see people form alliances to get others out. I mean, with the $400 first place prize, the seniors are not backing down from this challenge. As AP exams are getting closer and closer, the Cougars are ready for one last push towards to the end of the school year. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sophia Marine. This month has been marked with both stress and excitement as students begin rigorously preparing or expertly procrastinating their AP mm -hmm. tests, the long awaited an often dreaded test. All year long, students have been working towards mastery of the curriculum, and now it's almost time to showcase all that knowledge. Students like sophomore Daniela Gomez are a bit overwhelmed by the stress of the next couple of weeks, especially because she's preparing for three AP exams while at the same time trying to get an appropriate amount of sleep. Others are spending their days at the library, reviving old notes and folders from their earlier units and chapters. Others admit that senioritis is in full drive, that they are at the point of no return, and that among everything, the senior water gun game is at the forefront of their priorities. <laughs> Overall, though, there is stress and worry about final exam tests as students wonder how much studying they'll have to do to pass their AP tests. Inevitably, students, including me in past years, have put so much emphasis on these end-of-the-year tests in order to build a perfect or satisfactory college resume that is filled with strong AP scores. Emerging from my many conversations with students was how much weight and pressure they put on themselves to get a four or five, a mere number on its surface, and that at its core can clash with people's self-esteem. Other seniors have said that now that they're on the other side of the application process, they feel a bit disappointed by how much they've had to work in their college application and across all four years of high school in their chase to replicate their idea of a perfect student. And now it's hard to find any energy or motivation to invest in AP tests. Still, VHHS recognizes the culture of stress and expectations students are facing, especially during this time. For example, one of the many things that VHHS does that our Spark Club has been helping to organize is our annual Daring Week, which just started today, a week full of fun, small, and lighthearted activities, a week where students can freely drive pedal carts around the gym and play games and indulge themselves in the dessert truck that's coming to visit our school. This month was also marked in a lot of academic excitement and energy. Just about two weeks ago, FBLA traveled to Springfield for the annual FBLA State Conference with dedicated individuals and strong projects and presentations. Overall, it was an important learning experience. Being on a trip myself within a space of such high achieving students was good, humbling, and a bit overwhelming when we had to present to a panel full of judges. The experiences many VHHS students are getting to experience is abundant, whether it be at Springfield or in France. Just a few weeks ago for spring break, the VHHS and LHS orchestras went to France, a trip that Slajana Todorovic describes as, quote, a once in a lifetime feeling because of the amazing things we got to see, experience, eat, and the friendships we built on the long bus rides. Throughout the course of their one week trip, they went on long bus rides beginning as early as 7.30 to visit three different cities. For junior Maddie, Wayne, and Todorovic, the, scene, the sights were abundant from seeing the Eiffel Tower and the Palace of, Pope, of the Popes. For Todorovic, the most memorable part was getting to perform within the beautifully adorned walls of La Mideline, the venue in Paris where they had the opportunity to perform their pieces. Overall, it was a jam-packed learning and opportunistic experience, memorable because they got to perform three times and because of the unfortunately large number of students who got allergic reactions from Nutella desserts labeled as no nut. On the flip side, the sports world fully amidst their spring season is thriving. Track on both the girls and boys level, both just won the annual big AJ meet of the year. Nite Patel said how proud he was to be a part of the victory. 
and that it, quote, definitely felt amazing to get first after months of working hard. Additionally, senior Mark Mitkovetsky said the environment was filled with excitement, especially as they, quote, proved ourselves in our own field, and as everyone traded turns taking pictures with the winning plaque. Girls Badminton has also been a powerhouse, standing out as a successful and talented team, even amongst other good bat badminton programs like Deerfield and even Stevenson. Senior Nandini Barrett says how tight-knit, positive, and welcoming the community is across all levels, and how the blossoming community itself is one of the biggest reasons she always tried out for badminton. Junior Ananya Kavitskar points to the success of the program and the important aspects of dedication and teamwork that the team values. Although they are still a fairly new program in comparison to other schools, they are paving the way as a standout team. Overall, VHHS is doing what it's always doing, inspiring hundreds of students to be active, athletic, curious, and daring. Good evening. Uh, over the last month, VHHS Cougars have had a number of opportunities to become involved in our community. As administration begins to revise the current student handbook for the coming years, students have been invited to join committee meetings and share their opinions. Senior Joanne Doe called the experience super interesting and that she and the other students felt appreciated, respected, and listened to during the duration of the meeting. Opportunities to provide input on school policies are definitely appreciated by students and contribute to student buy-in on new policies. Last Friday, VHGIV's theme was VHGIV Community, as the Vernon Hills High School community welcomed the parents and children of school staff. Senior and VHGIV leader Sligjana Todorovic said that the theme really encompassed the event. Another leader, junior Caden Saris, called VHGIV a major success. He said that students formed a stronger community by participating in a question game where they would learn about each other's interests, hobbies, strengths, and shortcomings, pushing students to be vulnerable with one another and ultimately stimulating connection, which strengthens the community. He observed that students called it a good bonding experience and built relationships throughout the school. Overall, VHGIV offered Cougars and guests of the school a morale boost and an opportunity to see their peers through a different light. Throughout the last month, the College Resource Center has been offering opportunities for students to access resources for their post-secondary plans. First-generation college group allows students whose parents did not graduate from college in the United States to have discussions on post-secondary plans and has involved 25 students so far. The class of 24 is in full swing with post-secondary preparation with a CRC having hosted one junior event per month for the last months. These always catch the attention of juniors as they've started to feel pressure to think about the next, their next steps. The CRC also offered a field trip to seniors attending CLC next year. Students toured the campus and became familiar with the school that they would call home for the next couple of years. Future CLC students also, also took placement tests this month in anticipation of the school year. Overall, April has featured opportunities for everyone from child to parent at Vernon Hills High School, keeping students engaged even as the year comes to an end. Sophia Hari and I had the pleasure of visiting LHS this month. Um, I started my day with Mr. Duffy's law class and Ms. Rook's AP Chem. Um, Mr. Duffy co covered the limits on police powers and introduced me to terminology surrounding contract law, while Ms. Rook's led a lab where I got to wash plastic spoons change color. Mr. Bush's physics class introduced me to a very interactive teaching style that I hadn't seen before. And as a whole, the, class we took part, the classes we took part in seemed very involved with a high priority on interaction with the material. We also had the privilege of sitting in on the Writers' Expo, where students presented their written work. LHS offered a very inviting and supportive, supportive environment, whether in classes, in the study hall areas, or socially. Though the layout of the school took some adjustment, the content of classes seemed similar to what we've come to expect in Vernon Hills. Thank you. Thank you. I always learn so much about what's going on in the district when I uh, listen to your reports every month. That's uh, very helpful. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is the, uh, we have a few FOIA requests. Yes, we'll do. I'll give a brief summary. Um, we received one commercial request from Stephen Goba requesting information on bond payments that took 15 minutes and was completed on March 22nd. The next, we received a request from Skip Shine to um, have information regarding the superintendent's salary and the assistant superintendent's salary. Um, we, we directed this person to the D128 website where all administrative contracts are available. Next, we received a request from Janie Jordan from Data Research Part Partners asking for a copy of all D123 employees, name, address, and other pertinent information. Um, that took, uh, we again sent this person to the D128 
website where our staffing list resides. Um, we received a request from Vince Espy from Local Labs asking for a copy of our current mission statement and any previous mission statements. Um, we responded and to, to where this can be located on our new the new website with our new um, daring mission and uh, strategic plan. Next, we received a request from Marilyn Lacrosse to have access to uh, all pre-calculus honors class grade information, um, wanting the aggregate test scores and having it disaggregated by sex of student, race of student, religion of student, and ethnicity of student. Um, and this spent we spent two hours compiling that data. And finally, we received a request from Melinda Creasy for bid tabulations, and that took 15 minutes. Those are all of our FOIAs. Okay, thank you. And then some more good news. More good news. Um, let's see, seven D1, D128 athletes complete, competed at the Area B Special Olympics Games at Prospect High School earlier this month. They competed in the 200, 100, and 50 meter races with gold medal, gold medal winners Pen, Ben Peterson, Mackenzie Runke, and Daniel Granados, qualifying for the state summer games June 9th through 11th at Illinois State University in Bloomington Normal. Next, our very own Tom Kalentis was honored with the Outstanding mm -hmm. Principal Award at the Illinois Directors of Students. <laughs> That same evening, social studies teacher and student council advisor, Andrea Lara, was honored with a Distinguished Service Award for Lifetime Contributions to Student Activities. And I had the pleasure of attending that event and being able to celebrate uh, Dr. K. Also want to give a very large shout out to Jen Ulix and Deb Beagle for the leadership that they provide for that organization. Um, they were definitely very active in, in the evening's festivities and in their, in their statewide organization. Yeah. Next up, we already celebrated that Libertyville placed third at state for math and Vernon Hills placed fourth in state for math. So I'd like to, uh, that's what it says, not fourth. No, you're right. There's one point. Oh, my goodness. Point. Wow. <laughs> that is some competition there, folks. So both teams were very successful at state. <laughs> um, next, we have the Vernon Hills Science Olympiad team finishing fifth at Saturday state meet of U, U of I in Champaign. Team members placed in the top 10 of 15 events. The team is coached by head coach Nicole Collins and assistant coach Jan Choi. The Vernon Hills Library Media Center, where we are sitting, received a $5,000 grant from Rails, the regional library system, to welcome readers in all languages. As one of a small number of school libraries given a My Library Is grant, the library will add books in Ukrainian and improve selection of books in five other languages included in the library. Plus, a colorful mural will point the way to the LMC. Um, next, we have a thank you from one of our staff members, Jeff Brown, to the administration and school board. 47 Libertyville Choir students participated in our first educational tour since 2019 to Portugal over spring break. Three district staff members, Jeff Brown, Aaron Brown, and Kevin Gorrell, and seven adult chaperones accompanied the students on the tour, and I couldn't be happier with the outcome. It was a transformative experience for all involved. The educational tour was a complete success. The opportunity to present a choir for a Portuguese audience with American teenagers singing in the Portuguese language will be a lasting memory for my career. And I hope it will be a highlight of each student's high school experience. Our LHS students lived the daring mission this past week in real time. I can't thank you enough for supporting our efforts to provide them this experience. With gratitude, Jeff Brown. And that is the end of good news for tonight. That's great, thank you. Moving on, we have uh, next up is our consent vote agenda. Does any board member have any particular item we need to go off and discuss separately or can we leave it band as it? We're good to go? Okay. So uh, again, just to reiterate, this is the uh, items that were discussed earlier and 
committee and our typical items, uh, reports and things like that, uh, that the board votes on. So, uh, can we have a motion and a second? Rooney, so moved. Kulkarni, second. Okay, any questions or comments? Carol, can we have a roll call, please? Batson. Aye. Benjamin. Aye. Carmichael. Aye. Drumkey. Aye. Hessel. Aye. Kulkarni. Aye. Rooney. Aye. Okay, motion passes. Uh, next on the agenda is um, a number of action items. The first up is an intergovernmental agreement for Butler Lake with the Village of Libertyville. Yes, uh, currently we do have an intergovernmental agreement uh, with the uh, Village of Libertyville for Butler Lake, and that is just for um, purposes of installing a floating pier in Butler Lake, which we're currently still working on. Um, but we'd like to expand that intergovernmental agreement um, for some of the for the restoration work on the shoreline of Butler Lake. Um, and we had um, our club come uh, to the PMP meeting and present on some of their ideas. But, the, you know, the same club is uh, working on that restoration with the funding through the grants. Uh, the village is um, supporting this uh, expansion of our intergovernmental agreement, and they will be voting on it tomorrow at their village board meeting. So, uh, you know, our recommendation is to approve um, this intergovernmental agreement. And then uh, we will take it to the village tomorrow for their approval. Okay, thank you. Um, we need a motion for the uh, intergovernmental agreement regarding installation of pier and shoreline improvement project. Carmichael, so moved. Drumkey, second. Okay, any questions, comments? Okay, roll call, please. Benjamin. Aye. Carmichael. Aye. Drumkey. Aye. Hessel. Aye. Kolkarni. Aye. Rooney. Aye. Batson. Aye. Motion passes. Next on the agenda is the 2023-24 uh, textbook adoption. So we have the textbook adoption for a total of $216,000. Um, you will see two uh, textbooks that are not being purchased by both schools. One is a philosophy and film that is being purchased at LHS, but Vernon Hills made that purchase last year, updated to that same edition. And the other one is the African American Studies course um, that is not being offered at LHS next year. So LHS will make that purchase next year. And uh, we have started to work on a procedure documenting the process for future use. Okay, thank you. Again, we um, went through these in committee earlier in the month. So can we have a motion in the second, please? John Key, so moved. Benjamin, second. Okay, any further questions or comments? Thank you for your work on this. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay, roll call, please. Carmichael. Aye. Uh, sorry, Drumkey. Aye. Hessel. Aye. Kolkarni. Aye. Rooney. Aye. Batson. Aye. Benjamin. Aye. Okay, motion passes. Uh, next on the agenda is an online learning platform from Imagine Learning. Yes, um, this is um, to approve the quote for moving to emergent, Imagine Learning as our um, credit recovery, initial credit and summer school options online product um, with the hopes and intents of um, expanding programming um, as we move forward. Um, right now we are using two programs um, and we would like to move towards using Imagine Learning as district-wide. Um, for the 23-24 school year. This will be used at both both buildings. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, can we have a motion, please? Okay. So moved. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, Drumkey, motion to approve the quote from Imagine Learning to utilize their online learning platforms for summer courses, summer and initial course, right? Mm -hmm. Rooney, second. Okay, any questions, comments? Just to point out, that we talked about this a great deal in committee. Just because it's not on the consent agenda doesn't mean that we haven't discussed it thoroughly. So it might sound like we're breezing through some things here, but we did spend a lot of time looking yeah. at these. Yeah, and there's a lot of items on the agenda, so <laughs> we are moving. Uh, okay, um, we have a roll call, please? Sure. Drum key. Aye. 
Hessel. Aye. Polkarni. Aye. Rooney. Aye. Batson. Aye. Benjamin. Aye. Carmichael. Aye. Okay, motion passes. Next on the agenda is administrative contracts and amendments for the 2023-2024 uh, year. So these are our uh, annual contracts that we bring every year for our 10-month administrators, which include the department chairs, the team leaders, and the student activities directors. Our other administrators typically are on three- or five-year contracts, um, but these contracts are renewed uh, annually um, at around this time. You know, as long as we um, kind of know some of the other details for our budget, but uh, so we are bringing, um, you know, these administrative uh, contracts. Just to uh, point out, there was uh, a little bit of restructuring the contracts just to bring uh, the three 10 month administrators all in line with um, the number of work days and then how some of their um, uh, structure, their contact uh, contracts from uh, TRS and some old structure language from stipends that were pulled off of before they were in the union long time ago that uh, their extra pay was considered a stipend. And so we've changed some of that to reflect um, just keeping them all the same with, with uh, the 10 month administration positions. Okay, thank you. Again, this was discussed at quite some length in um, the committee earlier in the month. Um, can we have a motion and a second? Carmichael, mm -hmm. move to approve the administrative staff annual contract renewals, the administrative new annual contracts, and the administrative staff contract amendments as presented. Kulkarni, second. Okay. Any further questions or comments? Okay. Thank you. Roll call, please, Carol. Hessel. Aye. Kulkarni. Aye. Rooney. Aye. Batson. Aye. Benjamin. Aye. Carmichael. Aye. Drumkey. Aye. Okay, motion passes. Uh, next on the agenda is the administrative, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, annual educational support staff uh, staffing report. So this is our annual staffing report, much like um, in March when we brought the teacher staffing report, where we go through sectioning of um, our students, we go through our staffing for educational support. And uh, again, we discussed this um, at the uh, PMP committee meeting a few weeks ago, but just to review our staffing details, and uh, some of these reflect um, from our last staffing that we did um, last year. And so looking at uh, Libertyville High School, there is a difference um, of one um, ESP for special services aid. And again, special services aids, um, you know, that comes from our students and our student needs. Vernon Hills, um, we are going up in a special services aid for next year. Um, we have already gone up two EL aids. Um, that we hired during uh, during this year and um, to help with our growing EL uh, program. Uh, we already added a, one community liaison position that was added um, a few months ago at Vernon Hills. At Transition Pathways, um, we'll be adding a job coach and special services aid. Um, and we just recently, um, a few, a month ago, approved and then hired administrative assistant for Transition Pathways. Um, and then at uh, district office, that um, program that we've been working on was a decrease with our community education program. Um, and then uh, buildings and grounds maintenance staff that was um, district, it was a district position um, that was transferred to our Airmark buildings and grounds contract. Um, and then some other additions, uh, community partnership administrative position. Uh, we're recommending to add that position with the addition of the college and career resource um, position. Uh, we're going up um, in our assistive technology and occupational therapy um, position. And then again, that's due to the services, um, the, the needs of our students and those positions. Um, I have them under district because again, they service our students at Libertyville High School. Vernon Hills High School transition pathways and also our outplace students. So, you know, looking at, um, we will be at 2.0. So we'll have two positions next year in the district. Um, and those are initially added last year because we took those positions back from CEDAW. Um, So we were contracting those out and now we have hired our own people into those um, positions. And, um, you know, much like we've, 
you know, kind of been doing over the years with CEDAL is taking back some of our positions, but also our programs. So looking at our recommendation then, again, this kind of goes from last spring. Some of these additions happened during this year due to the needs, you know, again, with EL, with our community liaison position, but we're looking at a difference of 3.7 ESP staff. So our rec that's our recommendation to approve that staffing report for this year. Okay. We have a um, motion to accept a staffing report. Rooney, motion to approve the 2023-2024 educational support staffing report as presented. Our Michael, second. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Carol, can we have a roll call, please? Cole Carney. Aye. Rooney. Aye. Batson. Aye. Benjamin. Aye. Carmichael. Aye. Drumkey. Aye. Hessel. Aye. Okay, motion passes. Uh, next on the agenda is the annual education support staff salary uh, rate recommendations. So um, again, we talked about this at our PMP committee and just uh, a little brief history um, of our ESP salary rate um, and benefit adjustments. We've made adjustments in some uh, categories um, and just kind of going back to, uh, to 2019, um, we've added also uh, 403B board contributions. We've made some salary changes in our monitor security staff, non-classroom aides, LST secretary uh, positions and our starting rates. We've added um, retirement bonuses were increased. 20 year longevity was added. Um, last year, we made some changes to our uh, IT staff, starting salary rate increases, some vacation days for our 12 month staff were increased for new staff. And again, 403 board, 403 B board contributions were increased. Um, so our current staff, um, which we approved last year was to increase for the 23, 24 school year, 4%. Um, our starting sa staff salary rate increased, usually based on CPI. CPI was uh, obviously a little higher, um, but we recommend um, for next year, uh, starting salary rate increase of 2.9%. Um, and then the other adjustment that we would like to do is that we have, um, many different categories for our clerical staff. Um, and we would like to condense those into uh, one office clerical position um, and, and at the higher rate. And, and in doing so, by condensing those positions, we would also be adjusting um, our current staff, um, bringing them either up to that position, uh, up to that rate or higher than that rate. And so again, that rate was based on um, looking at what other schools um, are currently um, paying for those positions and maybe how also they have um, their positions, clerical positions um, marked. So we, you know, from the LSC secretary, main office receptionist to department secretary and condensing those into one um, pool. And so we would um, give an increase to our current staff, which are somewhat banded increases according to their years of service. So that newer staff, some of them might have to get a higher increase just to get to the 1876 or just slightly above. And then some of our staff that have been here a while are still gonna get uh, more than a 4% increase um, just because again, we're bringing our starting rate up to there. So that's our um, recommendation for this year um, moving forward. Okay, thank you. Uh, can we have a motion and a second, please? Rooney, I motion to approve the 2023-2024 uh, educational support staff salary rate adjustments as presented. Hessels, second. Okay, thank you. Any comments or questions? Again, this was reviewed uh, extensively in committee earlier in the month, so. All right, hearing none, Carol, can we have a roll call, please? Rooney. Aye. Batson. Aye. Benjamin. Aye. Carmichael. Aye. Drumkey. Aye. Hessel. Aye. Volcarney. Aye. Okay, motion passes. Um, next up, employment of employees. Here's a, a list of um, um, employees um, 
new retiring, whatever, a, a list of folks that uh, uh, have come in since our committee meeting. Yeah, so, so yeah, on the on the consent vote agenda was the employment of employees, um, you know, that were in before the committee meeting. And now this employment of employees are those since um, that committee meeting on April 10th. And obviously, with it being a busy hiring month, um, this will happen again at all our board meetings. So there are um, some items on that personnel report. Okay, can we have a motion, please? Benjamin, I move to approve the nine employment items as presented. Donkey, <laughs> second. Okay, any questions or comments? Okay, roll call, please. Batson. Aye. Benjamin. Aye. Carmichael. Aye. Drumkey. Aye. Hessel. Aye. Kulkarni. Aye. Rooney. Aye. <laughs> okay, motion passes. Next up is the um, uh, annual proposed uh, committee and board meeting schedule. We went over this in committee earlier. It's pretty similar to what uh, we've been doing now. We did make some adjustments to uh, compensate for some things that we typically move every year. Um, so this is the, the the list that was presented earlier. So if we can have a uh, a motion, please. Drumkey, move to approve the date and time for the fiscal year twenty four budget hearing. Mm, no, no. Wrong one. Oh wait, the committee. You're ahead of us. One. <laughs> Carmichael, move to approve the twenty twenty three twenty twenty four committee and board meeting schedule as recommended. Rooney, second. And Cara, how we'll come to that? I'll get to that next. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, any questions or comments on this? Okay, roll call, please. Benjamin. Aye. Carmichael. Aye. Drumkey. Aye. Hessel. Aye. Kulkarni. Aye. Rooney. Aye. Batson. Aye. Motion passes. Um, now on to the uh, proposed uh, budget adoption timeline. Um, listed here, um, along with the, the last six years of the... Um, uh, dates of adoption. I find this uh, fascinating. So you have uh, Dan. Any... Yeah, the, the purpose of this is to to really call to attention the, the date and time for the budget hearing based on the calendar. So looking to adopt the budget by the end of June. So in order to do that, you have to really have it posted essentially by the end of May. And so um, kind of backing up that timeline, uh, we just wanted to get the date out there now because that's what we're shooting for. So the hearing would be on June 26th at 7 p.m. So that's what we're looking to do to have the board pass that motion. Then we'll get it published in the paper and all the other requirements. Okay, thank you. I've just personally always found it kind of interesting that school districts typically don't adopt their budget until partway through the budget year when you're already spending the money on that budget. So. Uh, this brings it up to the to point where we actually adopt the budget and then start spending it. So, uh, so thank you for, uh, it's a, it doesn't seem like it, but that's a lot of work to make sure that happens at that time frame. It's been a few years in the work, so we appreciate that. So can we have a motion, please? Drumkey, move to approve the time for the fiscal year 24 budget hearing to June 26, 2023 20, at 7 p.m. Rooney, second. Okay. Any further questions or comments? Roll call, please. Carmichael. Aye. Drumkey. Aye. Hessel. Aye. Volkarni. Aye. Rooney. Aye. Batson. Aye. Benjamin. Aye. Okay. Motion passes. Next on the uh, agenda is uh, disposal of equipment. Uh, yeah, this is for some uh, uniforms for the LHS Fine Arts Department that came in after our committee meeting. That's why it was not consent agenda. So that's in that information is included for you. Okay. Thank you. We have a, a motion, please. Rooney, motion to approve the disposal of LHS Fine Arts uniforms. Benjamin, second. Okay. Any questions or comments? Roll call, please. Drumkey. Aye. Hessel. Aye. Kulkarni. Aye. Rooney. Aye. Batson. Aye. Benjamin. Aye. Carmichael. Aye. Okay, moving on. Um, next up is a uh, bid for the uh, Libertyville High School Water Fountain Replacement <laughs> Project. Uh, yeah, so we um, we had a, a replacement for how many? Uh, a total of seven areas. Seven yeah. areas in the building, so targeting, you know, some of the most 
most needed areas associated with that based on our summer capital project and trying to stay within our summer capital budget. And so we received uh, two bids. Uh, the low bid was from Ephraim Carlson and we've, we've used them before. We're using them now. We have a great relationship with them. Uh, the low bid for that is $19,800 uh, for base bid and alternate one. Um, the total cost of the project, when you add in all the design and the abatement, um, it's going to be 129535 which is less than the 150000 we estimated. Um, so all of that is in good order. Would we have loved to get more bids? Yes, but it was within what we were expecting. Okay, thank you. Uh, we need a motion to approve the um, bid for Ephraim. Carlson for $129,535. Oh, hold on. Oh. $92,800. Yep. Oh, I'm sorry. For Ephraim Carlson. Okay, I'm sorry. Includes base bid and, and alternate number one. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was reading the wrong line for the uh, the bid from e, for Ephraim Carlson at $92,800. It can happen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Drumkey, move to approve the base bid and alternate one with Ephraim Carlson and Son Inc. for the LHS Water Fountain Replacement Project for $92,800. Carmichael, second. Okay, now we got it straight. Thank you. Uh, any questions or comments? Does this, I do have one question. Yeah. Is this, by doing these seven, is this the most utilized of the water fountains in the building? I mean, how many are left, approximately? How many are left? Yeah, are a lot left. That need in to be the done. Hallways, or is this most of the water fountains in the hall classroom hallway? This will. This will. We are drastically low on water fountains on the second floor, so this will solve our our um, on the second floor as well as um, crucial areas on the first floor where we we are in need of fountains. Uh, for instance, of uh, in front of the main gym. The main hallway down the center of the building where there's an old water fountain. Um, those are two locations. Plus, we are also with our bathroom remodeling in the same hallway. First and second floor, we are installing two new units at that location. So there will be a total of nine new units um, between first and second floor in the building. I'm pointing out also they're not just drinking fountains. They're water filling stations, filtered water. Yeah. Just the one unit? Or I know our double units. So there'll be a handicap um, and then a standard height, and the handicap will have the bottle fill on that one. And, but this this will not resolve all water fountain issues at LHS. This was us looking at the summer capital and setting aside, all right, 150,000. How many can we get with that? We thought maybe six. We were able to get seven, yeah. and then the two from the wa from the washroom. So this is kind of us moving them in that direction, but th this is not going to resolve every water fountain issue. Yeah. We uh, discussed the water fountains with uh, the LHS administration, and we walked the building and looked at all, and they categorized uh, and prioritized which which ones to address first. So we followed that order um, by the just by the building administration and bid those uh, those areas out first. Yes, this will make a significant impact, and we're placing them in um, all of the high traffic areas. So they're not addressing every. Uh, water fountain we have and and resolving all of our issues, it will be a considerable positive impact for teachers, staff, and students. Fountains though stay on our list of where our priorities are. Mm -hmm. Move forward, water fountain is that one. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay, we've had a, a motion. Can we have a roll call, please? Hessel. Aye. Kolkarni. Aye. Rooney. Aye. Batson. Aye. Benjamin. Aye. Carmichael. Aye. Drumkey. Aye. Okay, motion passes. Uh, another piece of this project is the asbestos abatement. Um, any background on that real quick? Yeah, so the with a lot that it goes along with the water fountains is there's asbestos that has to be abated that's by them. And so that that's part of why the water fountains are a little bit trickier. Um, and so we've got a, a quote with Colfax, who's the contractor doing the washroom projects so that are already on site to give us a quote uh, to do those uh, abatements for 21,000. Um, that's included in the 129,000 total. So like that's, this is not on top of that. This is all inclusive uh, for that. So that's for Colfax. And so we wanted to bring that 
uh, for the board to approve um, just due to the size and it's going along with this project that was that you just approved. Okay, thank you. So we need a motion for the asbestos abatement with proposal from Colfax uh, for the amount of $21,000. Benjamin, I move to approve the proposal with Colfax to abate asbestos for the LHS Water Fountain Project for $21,000. Phil Carney, uh, second. Okay, any further comments or questions? Okay, hearing none, roll call, please. Cole Carney. Aye. Rooney. Aye. Batson. Aye. Benjamin. Aye. Carmichael. Aye. Drumkey. Aye. Essel. Aye. Okay, uh, motion passes. Last on the uh, this list is the uh, bid recommendations for seal coating parking lots. Any background? Um, so seal coating was on our summer list to seal coat both parking lots. Um, they are past due really to get seal coated. And so we wanted to get on top, get on that uh, real quick. Um, we originally had an, what was our original bid opening? What is? Uh, we did not conduct, we didn't open the bids. No, but when was it scheduled? April 6th. Yeah, so at that time we only had one bid. And so we did not open those bids because once you open them, the board has to react to them, either accept them or reject them. Uh, we did not open them and kind of went back and talked to the contractors and extended that timeline. Uh, so we had the bid opening this morning um, for that, and we still only got one. We thought we were going to get two, but we only got one. And the one we got was within what we were really close to what we were estimating. So we guessed um, or estimated 165,000. Um, the bids for this came in at 177,874. And that's as good as we're going to get. And we feel that that's a fair price uh, considering how many square foot? Uh, square we're foot? about 852,000 square feet. That's a lot of square feet. Well, both campuses, Brainerd and the VHAC athletic complex. So feeling very good about the price given the, the magnitude of this project. And I, I think one of our theories is the other, the other contractor is a little bit smaller and maybe wasn't sure that they could handle both buildings. Okay. Uh, but we told them they could just do one if they wanted to, but we only got one, uh, but we still feel good. And so that really brings our total uh, for summer projects at 3.866 million versus the 4.019 million. So we feel really comfortable with where we're at in terms of summer capital projects. Okay, thank you. We have a motion, please. Move to approve bids one and two with Patriot Pavement Maintenance for the LHS and VHHS parking lot seal coating for the amount of $177,874. Okay. Any questions or comments? I have a question. Okay. Um, okay, so two weeks ago at our committee meeting, we had ECOS present uh, regarding their their thoughts and hopes for our parking lots in LHS, especially that staff parking lot that backs into Butler Lake. And I just want to know if this seal coating project is like putting the horse before the cart a bit, A, but maybe um, is, is there any reason that we might not wait? I guess I should ask also, when is the plan ideally to redo that staff parking lot? Does this all make sense what I'm saying? I am actually going to meet with the ECOS uh, group on Friday morning at their at their meeting um, and discuss and, and discuss their project and what they're looking to. So I fully understand what they're looking for for grant money. Um, they talked about the parking lot. Uh, we're not sure. There's a lot of engineering that has to go in because of where the parking lot is located. Um, so um, we'll go through the process of what it'll take for um, engineering and, and everything with with the parking lot there on the north side of the building. Uh, in the meantime, the parking lot still needs to be addressed. Um, I went more cost effective with uh, the different products in this in this rebid uh, to make sure that we're um, being fiscally responsible. Um, so the parking lot, yeah. If the parking lot was to be replaced, I I look at to see it about a two year process possibly. And the seat. With engineering because the, because of uh, the stormwater management involved in that area. So that a lot of things have to be addressed. But you do think it's worth the investment to seal code at this time? I, I, yes, it is worth the investment to seal code at this time. 
Okay. Seal coating and stripe it. Nothing in seal coating this would preclude us from moving forward, and it's not a waste. This is more of a maintenance thing. This is more of a maintenance thing, and yeah, moving forward. That, yeah, my my concern is that it would it would be in conflict with that plan. Correct. Yes. So that's all been taken into account, obviously, and and you're meeting with Ecos to kind of hear what they have in mind for future plans. For future plans, yes. But regardless, we need to. We, regardless, we need to. Yeah, <laughs> we need to keep up uh, with the parking lot. Um, and maintain it yeah. until it's replaced. Yeah. So the long-term plan would have had that parking lot within the next couple of years anyways. Uh -huh. So this could marry really well, but seal coating is only last two years. Great. And Thank you for that information. That's really yeah. pertinent to this discussion. Okay. Thanks guys. Yeah. That's a good question. Thanks. Okay. Anyone else? Thanks, Kara, for that. Of course. Okay. Hearing none. Oh. Roll call, please. Okay. <laughs> Rooney. Hi. Batson. Hi. Benjamin. Aye. Carmichael. Aye. Drumkey. Aye. Essel. Aye. Paul Carney. Aye. Okay, motion passes. Next up is uh, a presentation, the D-128 Behavior and Discipline presentation, which we're looking forward to hearing. <clears throat> I'd just like to give a preface before the presentation begins. Um, during the February board meeting, the D-128 a teachers union read a letter and one of the things they asked for more information on a shared a concern. One was um, uh, how, maintaining high expectations for student achievement. And we discussed that thoroughly at last board meeting. A second area was maintaining high expectations for student behavior. And so uh, we have our wonderful LST team uh, ready here to give an overview of our behavior and discipline work now and in the future. All right, so good evening, um, members of the Board of Education, uh, D128 staff, students, parents, and community. Um, today, members of the Student Services Department will present on D128 Behavior and Discipline. I am humbled, and as my grandmother would say, peacock proud, mm -hmm. um, to co-present with some of our dy dynamic leaders. From Vernon Hills campus, we have Avalino Cortez, and from the LHS campus, we have Jason Schroeder. Oh, I'm sorry, Madeline, you are here. I didn't see yeah, you. I'm yeah. sorry. From VHS, we also have Madeline Hall. Um, from LHS, uh, Jason Schroeder. We have Megan Silverberg, and then we have Vernell Glover. Um, and supporting the team tonight, we have Greg Stilling and Eric Marosha from Libertyville. I'm in need of the clicker. Are you? Sorry about that. All right. So when delivering discipline that responds to the strengths and needs of students and providing support as a district, we need to deliberately prioritize attention to acknowledging and addressing in, uh, inequities in discipline, have common discipline practices that are evidence-based, effective in redirecting behavior and repair harm. We must integrate our practices into the TSS infrastructure with a PBIS component to organize practices and strategies, include data-based decision-making as part of our processes and provide staff professional development and training. Our goal as a department is simple, to keep students in the classroom to, maximize, to the maximum extent possible. To accomplish this goal, our team will do the following. Identify potential root causes that contribute to the school discipline concern. Learn and implement what research says about school and classroom discipline practices that are associated with lower rates of school discipline. Reduce recidivism. And last but not least, reduce exclusionary <laughs> discipline. SB 100 is the foundation which districts have to align all discipline policies, procedures, and practices. SB 100 was the strongest and most comprehensive effort made by a state 
to address the causes and consequences of the school to pipe school to prison pipeline. Within this state guidance, zero tolerance policies were eliminated, tighter restrictions on the use of harsh disciplinary consequences, such as expulsions and out of school suspensions for more than three days. It protects students from additional academic consequences. It eliminated disciplinary fines and fees and it charged school districts with ensuring that out of school suspensions, expulsions, and disciplinary referrals to alternative schools are used to preserve a safe and productive learning environment, not as a punishment for misbehavior. As part of this guidance, school districts have to provide appropriate and available support services for any out of school suspension over four days, we must create policies and procedures for re-engaging students when returning from suspensions and expulsions. And as stated in the first slide, it requires school districts to focus on meeting the needs of our students and addressing the root causes of disciplinary issues. By doing so, we must, be, we must increase our transparency and accountability to parents and guardians and we must promote ongoing, ongoing professional development for all staff and implement proven disciplinary alternatives. During this presentation, information will be shared with you regarding our current practices, our vision for D-128 behavior and discipline, and how it is aligned to SB 100. So how do we continue to move forward to move towards a fair and equitable practices that curtails implicit bias and prevailing deficit assumptions, we must, we must flip the switch on our questioning. We must do an internal audit to assess our, how our systems, policies, practices, and community contribute to the inequities. And we also must question who is benefiting and who is not benefiting. Before you is a framework for equity in school discipline. As we move forward with focusing on prevention, proactiveness, and intervention, this framework provides us with actionable principles. As a district, we pride ourselves on our academic rigor and our supportive relationships. But like any organization, there is always room for elevation, such as improving upon our database inquiry for equity, implementing culturally relevant and responsive teaching, and the inclusion of student and family voice on conflicts, causes, and solutions. In addition, as a team, our expected focus will be on strengthening our problem-solving approaches to discipline, database inquiry for equity, all while we build our infrastructure of tier supports that will be aligned with professional learning, which includes cultivation of critical consciousness and examination of self and systems and engagement in identity awareness work. So let's take a moment to look at the discipline continuum. School discipline processes genuinely, genu generally began with a referral, most often made by a classroom teacher. Most discipline initiated in the classroom is minor and subjective, such as defiance and disrespect. Racial and ethnic disparities persist even when accounting for student characteristics that include family income, assumptions about the education of the parent or the guardian, and the likelihood of misbehaviors. There is tremendous flexibility in the types of infractions that move forward from the classroom to the LST, as well as the types of consequences issued by administrators. Following a classroom exclusion with the information from the classroom teacher, other parties, which include students, and information gathered from an investigation, if applicable, 
Even with the teacher input, school administrators are responsible for deciding and assigning consequences. Subjective discipline situations have the greatest potential for bias in, um, in processing administrators' behavioral expectations like those of teachers and students that are shaped by perception, culture, and context. Before we go into specifically what consequences and discipline look like at LHS and VHS, one important thing we want to mention that I think is really important when we talk about behavior is pre and post pandemic student behavior. So while we see very similar behaviors um, that cause discipline attention, whether it's insubordination to a teacher, cell phone violations, um, chronic truancy, absenteeism, vaping, drugs, alcohol, um, to verbal and physical altercations. Post-pandemic, we still see the same behavior, but we see a significant increase in frequency, severity, and duration of crisis situation. With that being said, we're really lucky in D128 that we already have a learning support team in place to address student behaviors. We are team leaders. We are not just deans, and we work closely with student services to address the whole child. Post-pandemic, because of this significant increase, we've definitely had to turn to a trauma-informed lens within our LST and push that out to our staff to then partner with a variety of stakeholders, departments, teachers, ESPs, and community members to support this whole child after two plus years of behavior and social learning loss. So we were tasked with um, trying to paint a picture of what these procedures really look like on a day-to-day -day basis. So hopefully we can accomplish some of that here today in the next few minutes. As Megan mentioned, unfortunately, we have seen a major uptick in the frequency of a lot of these behaviors. Um, fortunate for us, we have a lot of structures in place already that help the communication between when something happens and how it gets down to what we call the learning support team. So up here, you'll notice the, the LST referral form does just that. It's something that's provided to the teachers and the staff and really gives them an opportunity when, some, when a situation does arise, that is the form that gets sent to us, which really can address a variety of things. If there are academic concerns regarding a student, um, those can be listed there and we can be given the context. Behavioral concerns, if the teacher is concerned about a, a student's social emotional well-being, Right, this form does a lot of that. It provides the context there, which then gets sent to the learning support team. And as again, as Megan mentioned, we're fortunate enough to work within this team model where we, we brainstorm collaboratively, as I'll talk about when it comes to our problem solving teams, to, um, to address the appropriate intervention, support system, accountability measures, so on and so forth. Of course, um, when it comes to the teachers as well, Obviously, the old tried and true method of having in-person conversations is always very helpful. We can ask questions, we gather more context. Emails frequently when, when, when a teacher's having an issue with a student or has some concerns, pass it along to us. But then of course, our students are often the main drivers of and the providers of this communication. They often show concern for friends and peers. They've, th thankfully over time, they found their voice and oftentimes are proactively seeking their own supports. So they'll often come down to the LST and, and share those concerns. Parents will often reach out, you know, if, if the student needs that extra um, layer of support to communicate their concerns. But then we also have a, all throughout uh, Libertyville and Vernon Hills, we have the See Something, Say Something campaign. So the QR codes which direct them directly to the anonymous bullying uh, tip line. So a lot of that information gets gathered. That, that's where we get the first wave of, okay, we have a concern here. And then as team leaders, we'll take that to the support teams, which consists of the school counselor, or the counselor, the social worker, uh, members of special services, prevention and wellness. This variety of perspectives really helps us when it comes to trying to figure out what is the appropriate intervention, what is the appropriate support that's needed, what are the accountability measures which should take place? Um, and so that is where a lot of the brainstorming really does take place. 
to to address situation by situation, right? Um, we also take a look at data systems. So uh, all of the surveys that our students have taken throughout the year, we'll often look at that data to look at trends and see if there are any bigger picture items that need to be addressed. Tableau um, also provides a lot of insight there. And then, you know, just in terms of all of the stakeholders in the school, ranging from the, um, the school resource officer to our school psychologist, a lot of times um, we have different perspectives weighing in on how to best address these situations. Uh-oh. I spoke too I, I spoke too long. And I, <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's me. It's not the last slide we have, though. So I, I can just wrap this up as well. So, um, so then from from this from this then obviously we get into the meat and bones of meeting with the student. Team leaders often conference with the students to gather their perspective. Oftentimes we have to. Um, there are other students involved, um, and when talking about the accountability measures. Um, these are things that when we think of old school discipline, a lot of that stuff is still in place, ranging from detentions, which can be served before school, after school, during lunch, um, two hour detentions, four hour detentions, of forcing for more higher level situations. And then we, in terms of the spectrum, there, there's, it, there is in school suspension. We often do our best to build in supports. We'll allow the student to um, go to a class, We'll try to push in with social work conversations. We'll try to um, align the student with their counselor to get the academic day squared away. So oftentimes when we think of in-school suspension, we think of someone just locked away. It's really not the case. We try to proactively build in as many supports as possible as we go on along the spectrum, but they're not in-school suspension. But we also have our alternatives to out of school suspension. So as you can tell, we're often <coughs> Constantly trying to offset the removal of the student from the classroom with added supports so that we're not minimizing their instruction along the way. And then maybe speak to that a little bit more. Well, I think one of our goals moving forward too is, you know, because of this increased behavior, there are going to be need for traditional consequences. <laughs> but just that alone isn't going to make our school amazing. So with that, we have three areas that we're going to focus on moving forward to. Number one, um, when we rethink traditional student behavior, we want to look at how do we intentionally, proactively create positive relationships with students, their classmates, and their teachers. So how do we build connection before we need to make correction? So that's one of our goals to continue to do that. Secondly, is our goals is looking at how do we then repair and restore and teach that behavior to then rebuild relationships if there is a discipline infraction. So as students, they're teenagers, this is the time where they're supposed to learn um, many things. And one is how to behave and how to function, how to disagree appropriately. And so one of the things that we're going to intentionally do is how do we repair and restore relationships between a teacher and a student or students and students so that they can still have a path to redemption and reconnection so they don't want to continue to feel harm. The more isolated someone feels from a community, the more they're going to want to harm it. So we really want that connection. And the last area, oh, I didn't realize it was up there, mm -hmm. uh, is the goal. And this really ties with our mental health and well-being strategic plan um, growth or area of growth with mental health and well-being. So it's the why of behaviors. So we're really fortunate to work with a team, but behavior is the symptom. So we need to work with our student services and our mental health and well-being teams to find out why that behavior is happening. And if we get to the why, we can teach behavior. And then students can learn and grow and become functional community members for us, but also functioning adults in the future. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. 
Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So as we continue to augment our discipline practices within the district, um, we believe that there must be a network of support systems. As learning is individualized, so is behavior and discipline. Therefore, each student may benefit from one or more of the many supports listed here. However, when we are providing universal supports to the entire D128 community within our infrastructure, we there must be connection, relationships, and community. Excellent. It is important that as we move forward, that fair and equitable, with fair and equitable practices, that it is a community thing. It involves students, staff, parents and guardians, as well as the environment in which we provide opportunities for learning and growth. For the community-wide implementation, we must continue to improve upon our data-making decisions, augment our program-level implementations, and implementations of classroom practices with fidelity. Next slide. Revisiting the discipline continuum, most of the behaviors exhibited within a school originate in the classroom. Here are a list of classroom practices that should be implemented in the classroom to mitigate behavior and implicit bias when interpreting student behavior. As you see, these practices implicate with our equity standards and practices, creating a welcoming and responsive community while continuing to have high academic and social expectations. Next slide. As we continue to elevate our view, we have to remember that we can't fix what we can't, what we can't fix what we don't talk about. Through data analysis, we can evaluate how extensive and where are the racial and ethnic, ethnic disparities, but the data has to move into action. Action includes a willingness to discuss disparities and their causes thoroughly and reflectively, the development of more interventions that include an analysis of causes and monitoring interventions outcomes with desegregated data. As part of this long and involving process, we must model a willingness to ask probing questions, acknowledge discomfort and mistakes, model commitment, and take advantage of teachable moments as part of our elevated process. Next slide. So what are our, so what are our next steps? A commitment from all, meaning we are going to work on our having our messaging throughout our community, community be consistent. Um, we know that there has been some voids um, and some areas of improvement, and we as a team recognize that. Um, we also want to, as stated earlier, begin to uniform our practices district-wide, increase collaboration with all stakeholders, and then also begin to look at professional development and training, or I should say continue. When looking at systems, um, we are looking at adopting or, yeah, adopting a new behavioral tool that will help with that referral system. Um, so that way that information from staff to our LSTs is more succinct and consistent. We're also, um, as um, previously as the last board member, I mean meeting, we also purchased Power School Insights that will help our learning, um, our LSTs and our problem solving teams to begin to really take a look at um, our data from a universal all the way down to an individual student and utilizing this data to assist students, as well as analyzing our programs, which include our interventions um, for our students. Again, this data will also be used to determine professional development and training. Also as part of this plan, looking at a clear and looking at clear and broad based rules, again, reviewing our discipline policies and procedures and practices, our alignment of those procedures and practices with ISB guidance and school board policies, um, our having our, or conducting our annual stu student handbook committee with members from all um, of D, 
of our D128 community, um, creating structures that augment co communication and creates a sense of ownership. And then we will also be having a team leader, uh, team leader summer retreat where we will begin to um, begin the work on some of the items that are listed. Last but not least, the most important um, in order for this to all be received is to create an inviting, positive and warm school climate. And that is to increase the interest and voice through focus groups, surveys and committees, identifying programs and resources that um, increases connectedness and engagement, increase staff visibility, and last but not least, increase connection and communication with our students' families. Next slide. So as we, as we move forward, we plan to continue to share information, gather voice from all stakeholders, and identify professional development as we continue to elevate D128 practices. This is a marathon and not a sprint. However, as the slide before you states, we have two choices to continue a culture of punishment or spend time building relationships, identifying the roots of the issues so that we can continue to cultivate daring change agents. On behalf of our team, we would like to thank you for allowing us to present tonight. I apologize for the technology. <laughs> and at this time, uh, we would like to open it up for questions, comments, or concerns. Thank you so much. And thank you to all uh, the, the rest of you who joined us tonight to present and or support this, uh, this very difficult but important work. Um, anybody have questions or comments from the board? Uh, I do, actually. Mm -hmm. um, coming back from listening to the roundtable the one day, one of the last comments the teacher made, she said, I cry every day. There's not a day I don't cry. So I'm going to give to our teachers. I think most of our teachers are doing the best that they can. Uh, this is an epidemic, not in D128. This is in every district that you talk to. This is in elementary and in high school. I know we're all battling the same thing, but when I'm going through this process, when I'm reading through the um, presentation, I'm seeing a lot of what has to happen in the classroom. And I do agree with that, but I'm not seeing how we're gonna support teachers uh, of what's happening in the classroom. I feel like teachers are doing engaging activities and they are trying to create a personal relationship with their students. And yet we are seeing behaviors that we've never seen before in 30 years that I've taught. So I'm not seeing a whole lot of what are we really gonna do? And the reality of, we got a lot of behaviors. We hear it in the streets. We hear it on our social media of what's going on in our district. So that students have expectations that they know they are accountable for. And we also take into consideration the rest of those 24 kids that are sitting in the class whose day has been disrupted because of behavior that we are not going to allow. I understand we have to support them, but I don't see that part of this presentation that we've got a lot of other students in the classroom that are trying to get the best education. I'm not making this, per I'm trying very hard not to make it personal, but this is the reality of where we are in schools and behavior. And I don't see any of that address in this presentation. And I wanna make sure that that's not lost when your committee is discussing this. So if you go to that very, not the very last slide, but that um, slide that has a commitment from all and then looking at the systems, um, as we have begun to analyze discipline, and again, I thank you um, for sharing that this is not a just a D-128, but it is um, something that we are seeing on a national level at all schools. Um, however, what we need, what in order for us to begin to um, move toward um, coming back to hopefully um, classrooms and academic environments um, that are um, where we're not seeing the level of behaviors that we're seeing. Um, we also have to look at the systems that are in place. Um, a lot of what we have began to look at is number one, that communication between the LST 
as well as the teachers. That was something that came out loudly in which teachers would say, hey, I wrote a referral and I have not heard anything of what happened. Um, and so one of those things that I have spoken to um, my team with and we've worked on is looking at, okay, how can we approve upon that system? And one of those um, approvals would be that behavioral to referral system, but it doesn't just stop there. It also involves making sure that we come back to having conversations about teachers because sometimes, sometimes what also happens is we have departments that work in isolation. So they never know what one hand is doing. So we have to get better in doing that as well too. Um, another thing that we also plan to do um, also is seen um, in our systems as well as that commitment from all is increasing collaboration. So really beginning to have those conversations and including teachers in those conversations, because right now it's just LST and administration without, without teacher voice. So we want to include that so we can know, okay, how can we make things better? And being reciprocal and saying, here are the things that we're implementing within the LST, within the buildings, district-wide, so that there, um, there's a level of consistency. Last but not least, um, we kind of have our behavior and discipline practices all over the place. Everybody kind of does their own different thing. So one of the things that we'll be focusing on during that uh, discipline retreat will be beginning to be consistent with that response, consistent with those interventions, and being and then coming back and communicating that with our entire D128 community. But we plan to continue to support, um, uh, be, be able to be visible, as well as to listen to concerns and, and, and make ourselves available for that. Well, making the teacher a part of that conversation is gonna be huge and a part of the process. Um, so are teachers part of that team leader retreat? No, no, um, it's, it would just be the team leaders at this time, because during that time, we are going to specifically focus on alignment of processes, alignment of policies, alignment of our practices. But are the yep. team leaders going to have the information from the teachers to share what it is that's happening in order to align? So this, this will be more so of what we are doing. So for instance, if a kid does this, how are we responding? What does that look like? What is being done at LHS? What is being done at uh, Vernon Hills? And how can we bring um, those responses together with the timeline of at the beginning of the school year, being able to begin to communicate that with teachers, being able to um, provide professional development on that new referral system, and then looking at scheduling time with teachers, whether that's in focus groups, whether that is during a committee meeting, or um, having more lunch and learns about what we're doing as an LST. But we haven't talked about having that communication with students. When do we talk about students that this is our expectation? So, Correct me if I'm wrong. I know that at the beginning of the year, the deans go, and if someone wants to come up and just talk about that, but at the beginning of the year, that's when that is communicated to the students about behavior, discipline, and expectations, what that should look like, um, how they should um, hold, the, you know, how they should handle themselves within the building is usually done at the beginning of the school year. I think one other thing I just want to interject the questions you're asking about when might we have time to discuss and involve teachers more? When might we have time to um, it, it instruct lessons on the behavior we desire? All of those things right now are barriers to growing in this area because of our schedule. We, um, we have very limited time for professional learning with our teachers. We have very limited access to students we do do like second period surveys, but it's not necessarily instruction-based lessons. 
So we do have the use of time committee right now is meeting. It won't be for a year or two, but that is part of the design of our whole system right now. We're very limited with the access we have to do anything cross-disciplinary like a behavior lesson would be. So what I'm going to say is um, at Vernon Hills, there are a number of times that we do it. We do it during freshman orientation. We start with our freshmen when they're coming into our buildings, talking about this is our community. This is how we act in our community. And I'll shout out our principal. He does an excellent job of articulating that. We also do it in um, freshman transition. We also have class meetings where we talk about expectation. So we do do it a couple of times with kids in large groups. VHF, we do it at the right assembly. Um, so there are a couple of times where we try to enforce that message. Well, and I just wanna say, I, I hope it wasn't lost. And I know a lot of my teacher colleagues are here. You are my partners in this, that I am not trying to deflect. I'm trying to reflect with you. And I think one of the reasons I say is the concern and what I'm excited about in the future is really working on increasing our intervention services, right? So what else can we do so kids feel successful academically and behaviorally? And so how can we extend like LST support and services and explicit teaching, but also maybe interventions and new levels that they're trying because there's an academic and a behavior delay. And then we see, you know, it all come together in that moment. But absolutely, I think we explicitly teach in link crew. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. K does a great job. We do a lot with our seniors before school um, on senior expectations. I will give a shout out to our seniors. We've had no glitter bombs in the hallway. It's <laughs> like really respectful of everybody's learning environment on that first day um, of really creating a culture where we care about each other. But it's new behaviors for us too. And there's definitely, I probably have more tips teacher, parent, supervisor meetings that I ever have because that voice is the voice. I know so, there's no easy yeah. answer. And I'm no, not trying to I, I just want to like, I'm looking at my college an epidemic yeah. and there's no easy answer. But it's and it's also sure. not anything we can throw money at and buy a program. No, so this is, say, we also have a teacher meeting where we talk about what yep. are the behaviors you're seeing and let's work with the individual students. So we come together and we create yep. a contract with those students to talk about, okay, this, these are the expectations we expect. This is how you're going to know when you're off track. And these are some of the things you can do to fix the behavior. So we, we work with teachers and individual students to make that happen. And we involve a lot of the parents and the, for us, those meetings of parents, teachers, and students get their shared expectations moving forward. One of the main points of emphasis that got lost during that technological glitch that we had, right? One of the slides was talking about how we at, in the LST receive the information. And we're going to acknowledge that one of our current blind spots, one, one area for improvement is closing the loop with the teachers so that each time those situations do arise, they are aware of the closure that comes with each of those situations. That's something that, that um, Dr. Bowen alluded to as well, as far as some of the um, power school tools that, that could help with that communication and the closing of the loop. The other thing that we wanted to really stress is as these things happen, as these situations arise, really, we understand very um, very well, the fact that there does need to be, that the students need to be held to a very high standard. And when we discipline them with our accountability measures via the detention or the Saturday, whatever it may be, that is the temporary band-aid over the wound, right? And then it's through our support measures that really look, that's the antibiotic, right? That, that's what's really looking to heal the problem along the way. Otherwise, it's just don't do that, don't do that, don't do that again. Don't and and, and there's no learning that takes place. So we want to stress the discipline that, that that is going on while we're also supporting and intervening appropriately to help with the growth. Along Thank the you. That's perfect. I mean that's exactly yeah. And I, I agree with you. It's not it's not a program, it's people, right? It's the people that provide the intervention. And that's I think what's great about having a team, but I think we're gonna have to continue to grow and evolve um, as learning support teams and as schools. And then I'll write a book. <laughs> Good. Find the solution. You'll be a millionaire. Yeah, I'll let you know. <laughs> Other questions, comments? 
That's a good discussion. Thank you. And thank Cara, you. thank you for, for nailing thank you guys. Yes, thank the you. questions that I was writing down. So that, <laughs> See, I did it again. You did it again. I, I love it. <laughs> thank Great. you, everybody. Okay, uh, moving on. Next uh, item on the agenda is the superintendent's report. Yes, actually, I'm giving my time to two other people um, who are giving some updates. Um, the first is from Mary Totterick, who is going to give us an update on our communications audit. Yes, communication has been the buzzword tonight, so I feel like this is uh, perfect timing. Um, improving communication in all areas of our district. So um, as Denise said, I just want to give you a little update on where we're at and, and where we hope to be heading. And um, as you know, um, we could go to the next slide. Um, District 128, um, our primary focus is to communicate with our primary stakeholders, which would be our staff, our students, and our parents. And we also connect with the broader district community, which would be on the next slide, um, <laughs> the residents, our alumni, the business community, and our sending districts. So some of the avenues that we use um, for, for providing communication, I just wanted to give you some analytic overview, um, EPAW prints, which I hope all of you receive every week. Um, that is currently going to um, directly to over 8,000 people through our subscription service and our parents. Um, but it's also sent to everyone who works here, all of our students, our retirees, and posted on social media. So we have um, we've been six, we've been exceeding um, a district or I'm excuse me an industry open rate for our emails. We average between six thousand and eight thousand opens per newsletter, which wow. which is really good. Um, the next slide shows our social media, which we are also doing fairly well on. Um, Facebook, we currently have almost 4,500 followers, um, just over 4,000 on Twitter and just over 1,200 on Instagram. And the next slide, we have our podcast, which uh, we currently have 930 downloads which is pretty cool considering we've only done 12 episodes so far. Um, we did a great one this morning with our students from the Ecos Club at Vernon Hills and or excuse me, Libertyville. And that one uh, should be coming out next week. So that'll, that'll be a really, every time we involve student voice in anything, we get a lot of uh, downloads and, and likes on that. And then of course, our next one is um, just the news media contact. So I just wanted you to see, um, these are the typical local media, uh, all the way up to national media that we deal with. So um, we have a pretty good relationship with our, with our media. So that's good. So Denise and I had talked about um, a communication audit. So we know we're doing all these things, but what are, what are we missing? Or what could we maybe not put as much emphasis on? What could we do better? What could we add to our uh, communication repertoire? So we have been working um, as of earlier this month and through June with an agency called Jeskulka Terman, and they're a Chicago group that is very, um, very experienced in working with schools and doing communication uh, audits of their communication programs. And by June, they will be giving us some recommendations for um, forming our new communication plan, which will align with our strategic plan. And to accomplish that, they've been reviewing all of our communication um, avenues to date. They have done interviews with, I believe it was a, it was eight um, district leaders, um, ESP administration, union representatives, and the next step is later this week, they are doing focus groups with parents as well as staff at both schools. And they're going to take the information that they gained from both of those experiences and develop a survey that will be going to students, staff, and families. And that's what they're going to base their recommendations for our, um, for our communication plan. 
So, um, but we didn't want to wait because we know that's not going to be till June. And then we'll be launching that new plan in the start of the school year. So we thought, what can we do in the meantime? So we are launching what we are calling hashtag celebrate 128. And as many people have mentioned this evening, you know, school's hard right now. And, and our teachers, all teachers everywhere have kind of taken a taken a beating in the media and our communities. And we thought, you know, it would be a really great time to lift them up and to do some really, really positive, um, meaningful communication about them. So what we would like to do over the next couple months is um, focus on the really cool things that our teachers are doing to build relationships with students, um, things our staff members um, ESP are doing to build relationships with students, as well as doing some focus um, social media hits, um, profiling our upcoming retirees and all of their you know great things they've done in their careers, focusing on our new staff members as, as they're hired. We'll do a little shout out to them. And um, again, just you know, ongoing as we always do, the, the awards and recognition for for our students and staff, but um, we'll be reaching out to to the buildings and probably putting out um, a lot of information to our staff to get those stories. And um, I look forward to sharing those and sharing the results of the audit. Do you have any questions? Hey, Mary. Yes. Hi. Hi, there's a voice in the sky. Um, I did want to mention that um, I was also interviewed so that there was board voice that was contributed to the um, audit survey. Yes, thank you for sharing that. My mistake. So um, can you comment a little bit? Um, I think the Celebrate 128 hashtag is a fantastic idea. What do you envision in terms of frequency? I would, I would love to say there would be at least three a week in our, in our social media. And, and if it were to be more than that, that would be a great problem to have. <laughs> I would, I would love to tackle that. Thanks. Okay. Anything else? Any other questions or comments? I think I'm the only one in the room who can't follow our Twitter because I've been permanently suspended, even though I don't know how to use it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. What, what did you do? Throw it out. You said something bad about Elon, probably. <laughs> I don't know what I did. I do enjoy your podcasts, Mary. Mm -hmm. Those are those are yeah. a, a unique and um, impressive add to the communication tools for our district. So thank you. And I'll give a shout out to our audio editor, Brian, back there because he pulls it all together and takes out all of my makes it happen. Well, thank you. <laughs> that talking over the intro, like in the beginning, mm -hmm. I'm always just like in awe of how real it sounds. It's a real podcast. <laughs> intro music with Mary's voice. Oh, it's gorgeous. Well, he's he's the magic maker with that. <laughs> yeah. No, that's and I've always been so impressed with the the ability to uh, this district to reach out to the community, the communications programs that we've had in the past. And like everything here, we just keep trying to make it better and better and better. And thank you. Looking forward to uh, seeing what's to come, both with Celebrate uh, 128 and with the future results of the uh, the inventory and the plan for the fall. So thank you. Yeah. One last thing just to add on to Mary's statements, um, connecting this back to some of the patterns that we've been hearing from staff about wanting improved communication. Also, we are we made it very explicit with the auditing firm that we want not only feedback on more external communication with parents or students and getting the word out, but also our internal communication protocols. So they'll be asking very specific questions um, of the people they're interviewing as well as during the focus groups. Um, so we're making sure we're getting the most of this external audit and have the best plan possible for moving forward. Yes. Great. Look forward to it. Um, I just wanted to give a very brief update for the strategic plan. Last fall, when we had the goals, we sent a, small, a short mailer to all families in the district, celebrating that part of the accomplishment and saying once we had our action plans and 
and everything completed, we would send something more comprehensive. And so in the next week, it should be uh, reaching all district families, um, a summary of the strategic plan um, with photographs from, you know, the, the processes that were used to do it, from the goals to the actual plans that were presented to all of you in December and January, trying to condense them into a very digestible form for all of the public. So be looking forward to those coming into your mailbox. That actually dropped to the post office today. Oh my, how Anytime. hot off the press. <laughs> <clears throat> and we've also updated the website to have a page just dedicated to the strategic plan. And we are also upgrading the, uh, the district data profile will also be available via those links. So the data that we used in our decision-making as well as any updated data will always be present there. And next, I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Gilliam, who um, has been meeting with some parents. He and I met with a small group of parents, and he's been doing a lot of follow-up. And so we wanted to give, give him a chance to update us as well. Yeah, the update uh, about Vernon Hills graduation. As you know, last, uh, last month of this meeting, we heard from several families uh, and also were presented with a... Um, a list of families who had shared some of the same concerns relative to really uh, our venue here at the high school that we have used uh, since we graduated our first graduating class in 2002. Um, and just some uh, con concerns in comparison to both uh, Libertyville and other surrounding schools. And really, really the fundamental issue is the representation of families at that ceremony. Like how many guests do we get to come uh, get to come to our ceremony. So, uh, you know, respect that perspective and input. As Dr. Herman said, she and I met with a representative group uh, and listened to their concerns and we got into action right away. Just wanted to update you on some of that action. Uh, we've developed a, a core team uh, that is both uh, parents, parents of middle schoolers and high schoolers, uh, as well as staff members, ESP, certified staff administrators, uh, that is going to kind of tackle this problem. Uh, we've done a few things already. We have uh, surveyed local schools. So we sent a survey out, got responses from about 30 schools, plus um, jumped on their websites and found some remaining schools. But we're talking about schools north of us, like Wakanda's Grays Lakes, um, schools like 211, so that's kind of the Palatine, Hoffman Estates area. 214 is more Arlington Heights, Prospect, uh, Prospect Heights, Rolling Meadows, that area. And then our, our Vernon Hills Conference, which is uh, the Central Suburban League, so that's south and east, um, Glenview, Northbrook, Main Township, Evanston, those schools, as well as uh, the Libertyville Conference, which is the NSC, so that's Stevenson, uh, Mundelein, Lake Forest, those schools. So anyway, we've got responses back from a lot of schools. Just so you know, um, there's really a spread between three things. One is outdoor graduations at uh, stadium, home stadiums. Uh, another is the Now Center, which is the Now Arena, which is what Libertyville uses. Uh, and then there's a group of schools in our conference, the Central Suburban League, Suburban League. so again, South and East, that go to uh, the Rosemont Theater. Um, in full disclosure, there's one school that graduates in its gymnasium. Welcome to Vernon Hills. <laughs> so uh, uh, parents were correct about that. Um, we also have been um, uh, editing, drafting a survey. Really, it'll end up being three surveys, one to parents, community, and we'll be surveying really five classes. So the three in school now, not not the class of 2023, they're in, uh, we already know their plans, but the other three classes and then seventh and eighth graders as well, uh, those parents to see what their priorities are for a graduation, uh, as well as our own staff um, and our own students. So we will be sending out those uh, surveys on May 5th. We're, like I said, we're in the process of finalizing that survey. Uh, simultaneous to that, we are already talking to some of the venues. Like I said, there's, there's, if we're going to be off campus, there's not that many choices to choose from, um, as, as our little survey has indicated. So we are already in the process of, as we're gathering information, just looking at feasibility and availability of some of these other larger facilities. Um, 
and and once yeah I, I think once once we get the survey back once we start to kind of analyze the data we'll be visiting sites we'll be um you know looking at the data for trends and priorities and uh making decisions ideally we we've got a decision by the start of next school year so we can announce that and roll with it uh, right away so that's that's our update on graduation any questions thank you for doing all that yep. work yeah yeah a lot of legwork thank you it's a good update thank you um any other questions comments uh, hearing none we'll move on um this is I, super I do have just okay. one question um and just to kind of push on the intention of the survey is that to kind of gather what else is everybody looking for or is that potentially to still is there a potential that the survey will say we we can stay where we are in Vernon Hills I look we haven't ruled out anything um and we the way the survey looks like right now, get some demographic information, ask people about the number of tickets, um, and then gets priorities. Like what is the most important part? What, what's the most important aspect of graduation to you? Is it is it location? Is it what the seniors want? Is it those kinds of priority things for us to measure? And then it does flatly ask, like, what is your preference in graduation? So, um, yeah, I, I, I don't think anything's off the table. Um, we haven't eliminated any of the options right now. I don't know if that answers your question. Thank you. Okay. All right. More to come. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is um, board comments and events. Anyone have anything in those last few weeks they want to share? I know we had spring break in the middle of that. And so a few I, I, I got to be part of the uh, the interviews. It was fun, wasn't it? But I do not envy our principal's decisions <laughs> because they are going to be difficult. We had some really great applicants. Uh, going through the process is really, it, uh, it, it was probably stressful for you to do, but sitting on the other side, were you a little proud of yourself for having gone through it? Yeah, mm -hmm. when I was there, it felt a lot more like it just, yeah, I was like, how, I don't remember how I answered these questions like a year ago. Yeah, I, I, can't, I caught a little hint of why me. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All the interviews we saw, everyone there was just so succinct and like they just spoke so well. And we were like, wait. Yeah. We <laughs> <laughs> and then there's another set coming up this week. Yep, this week. Did you get somebody to come in? I apologize for not being available. We're all good. Thanks, Don. All right. Okay. That, but to, to your point, that is definitely one of, one of the hardest decisions we have. You're talking about the best of the best, and you have to narrow it down to three. We used to narrow it down to one, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, so at, two. at least we get to, to have three per side. So that's nice. Yeah. yeah, the reason it grew was thing. it was so difficult to, to choose just one. So we said, oh, well, it's just grow it a little bit so why not anything else okay um, we'll move on i'm sorry hey i'm just going to share real quickly there is a social media litigation webinar that i'm going to attend and report back i don't know if it's something that our district will um, want to participate in but the firm that successfully sued jewel is uh pulling together a, a lawsuit um, against several social media companies on the basis of the impact of social media products on the mental health crisis. Um, I don't know, again, very much about this, but I am interested to hear um, the districts that were able to participate in uh, the litigation for Jewel were able to use some of the proceeds from that successful suit to defray their costs of uh, vaping mitigation. Uh, likewise, the participants in this suit, if they're successful, will be able to use some of the proceeds to offset the rising cost of uh, the youth mental health crisis and uh, the responsibility that that puts on public schools uh, to answer that uh, crisis. So um, that will take place Thursday, May 11th. Um, I will report back if there's anything I think that we should um, discuss. 
Okay. Thank you, Lisa. Um, anybody else? Okay, moving on, IASB report. I, nothing really new to report. I will be attending the Lakes Division uh, meeting coming up in next week, um, um, where we'll be planning for the next year's uh, events and whatnot for the Lakes Division. So more to come on that. CEDAW, uh, you mentioned nothing there. Uh, any other reports from anything? Uh, future agenda items, we have some items here listed um if there's something of interest you want uh, us to consider adding you know we can discuss that but we won't go through these in any detail just to note them uh and then we are ready to adjourn this meeting and again just to reiterate we're going to move right into a special meeting where we're going to uh have our board members who are newly uh re-elected uh, take the oath of office and do all that process uh, here immediately following this. So can we have a motion to adjourn? So Hi, Michael. Rooney, sorry. Rooney gets it. Carmichael second. Thank you. Uh, roll call, please, Carol. You can do a voice vote. Yeah. No, we can. Yep. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we will take a a five minute uh, break and then we'll reconvene. <laughs>
Lisa. Lisa. Hello. Ready to go? Okay. It is 9.19 p.m. I'd like to call to order this special board meeting for reorganization of the Board of Education. May I have a roll call, please? Uh, Jim Batson. Here. Kara Benjamin. Here. Don Carmichael. Here. Kara Drumkey. Here. Lisa Hessel. Here. Sonal Kulkarni. Here. Casey Rooney. Here. Great. We note all board members present. Since we only do this once every two years after an election, I will briefly run through the agenda. Uh, we will have an invitation, invitation for public comment. Um, uh, we will ask our board secretary to share the uh, certified uh, Lake County Board of Education election results. Um, I will appoint a president pro tem for the reorganization of the board for the purpose of this meeting. And uh, we will move to adjourn the retiring board, CNADA. Uh, following that, uh, we will have another call to order and a roll call, um, as well as the administration of the oath of office for the three board members that have been reelected. Uh, we will have our board officer elections. And then we will briefly discuss our committee's chairperson and ISB and CEDAW delegates before we adjourn. So um, this is an invitation for public comment. Is there anyone present wishing to address the board? It doesn't look like it, no. Excellent, then I will ask, I will turn it over uh, for action for item A to Don to read the official results of the consolidated election of April 4th, 2023. Okay, uh, these results are available on the county clerk's website. I have them here. Uh, Casey Rooney received 3,029 votes. Lisa Hessel received 3,027 votes. James Batson received 2,982 votes. I'd like to know what 40 people voted for you guys. Mm -hmm. Hey, all you needed was one. So. <laughs> I know, all we needed was one. It's not personal. <laughs> and we certainly do thank everybody that came out to vote and for your continued support. Um, yes, at this absolutely. time, moving on to item B, um, I would like to ask for a motion. Hold on, hold on. We have to actually, ex we have to have a motion to accept. So if I could have a motion, or you, Lisa, that's your motion. No, go right ahead. I don't think she can. I'm to accept the official community high school results of uh, District 128 Board of Education results as presented. Drum key second. Thank you. The motion passes. And now we will move along. You haven't voted. Oh, sorry. Going too fast. Okay. Um, Benjamin. Aye. Carmichael. Aye. Drum key. Aye. Hessel. Aye. Kulkarni. Aye. Rooney. Aye. Batson. Aye. Okay, thank you. Motion passes. Now we will move on to appoint uh, the president pro tem. I would like to ask for a motion to approve the appointment of board secretary Don Carmichael as president pro tem for the reorganization of the board. Rooney, so moved. Batson, second. Roll call, please. <laughs> Sorry. This might be the one time I say nay. <laughs> if you don't, I'll be disappointed. <laughs> Carmichael. Aye. Drumkey. Aye. Hessel. Aye. Kolkarni. Aye. Rooney. Aye. Batson. Aye. Benjamin. Aye. Thank you. Motion passes, and I will turn it over to you, Don. Okay, so the next thing on the agenda says move to adjourn the retiring board, Sini Dae. Uh, so we need a motion to adjourn the retiring board. Junkie, so moved. Batson, second. And this officially closes out all the work we've ever done. This is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is there any other discussion or weepy no. moments? Weepy moments. <laughs> yeah. so, um, um, Drumkey. Aye. Hessel. Aye. Kolkarni. Aye. Rooney. Aye. Batson. Aye. Benjamin. Aye. Carmichael. Aye. Okay, so I'm going to call this meeting to order. Um, and uh, we have three new members. Congratulations on your election. Uh, no, I need a roll call. Store for you. 
<laughs> uh, yeah, to open the meeting, we need a roll call. Benson. Aye. Benjamin. Here, I should say. <laughs> Carmichael. Here. Drumkey. Here. Hessel. Here. Kolkarni. Here. Rooney. Here. Uh, each of you have been provided with the official oath of office. Um, those of you who are uh, returning to the board can chime in if you wish, uh, but it is not necessary. Uh, but if you would stand, I threw that in there. I don't know if they have to stand. I just, I think stand. It's going to be hard to read. Uh, and then I will start it out, but then if you would just read them all together, please. Okay. I, I Jim Lisa Bass, has yes, me, do solemnly, do solemnly swear, swear or that I will faithfully discharge, discharge the duties of the office of the office of member, member of the Board of, the Board of Education, Education of the High School of District, community high school district 128, 128 in accordance, in accordance with, with the Constitution, Constitution of the United States, States the Constitution of the State, State of Illinois, and the laws, and the laws of the State of Illinois, Illinois to the best of, the best of my ability. ability. I further swear. I further swear, further swear that I shall respect. I shall respect, respect taxpayer interests interest by serving, by serving as, a as a faithful protector, protector of the school of the district's school assets. assets. I shall encourage, I shall encourage and, respect and respect the free, free expression, expression of, opinion of opinion by my fellow, by my fellow board members, board members and others, others who seek, who a, seek hearing a hearing before the board, board while, while respecting the privacy of, of students, students and employees. And employees I shall recognize, I recognize that a board, board member, member has no has legal, no authority, legal authority, authority as an individual, as an individual and the decisions, and the decisions be made, made only by a majority, majority vote, vote at a public, a public board, board meeting. meeting. I, I shall abide, abide by majority, majority decisions, decisions of the board, board while retaining the right to see changes, see changes in such decisions, decisions ethical, through ethical, ethical and constructive and channels. channels. As part, As part of the Board of, board of Education, I shall, I shall accept, accept the responsibility for my role, my role in the equitable, equitable and quality, quality education of every, of every student, student in the school district. I shall, I shall foster, foster with the board extensive, extensive participation of the community, of the community formulate, formulate goals, 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 define outcomes, and, and set, set the course for community, for community high, school high school district 128. I shall, I shall assist in establishing, establishing structure and an environment, environment designed to ensure all students, all students have the opportunity, have the opportunity to, to attain, attain their, maximum their maximum potential through a sound organizational framework. I shall strive, I shall strive to ensure a continuous, continuous assessment, assessment of student, of student achievement, achievement and, and all conditions affecting, affecting the education of our children in compliance, in compliance with state, state law. law. I shall, I shall serve, serve as education, education key advocate, advocate on, behalf on behalf of students and our community, and our community schools, schools to advance the vision, vision for community, community high, high school district 128. And, and, and I shall strive to, to work, work together, together with the district, the district superintendent, superintendent to, to lead the school district, district toward fulfilling, fulfilling the vision the board, the board has created, created fostering, fostering excellence, excellence for every student in the areas, areas of academic of skills, skills, knowledge, citizenship, citizenship and, and personal, personal development. development. Very good. And uh, Continuing with this, uh, this is now our governance team. Everybody's been sworn in. So I would like to remind you and all of the members of our community that we do have a board governance handbook. So don't forget to review the tenants of that handbook. Very good. That's uh, That could actually be a, a tradition for us is yeah, to address nice. the uh, handbook now that mm -hmm. we have it. So every two years, we'll... Uh, We'll be reminded of it. Okay, so item number four for discussion are board officer elections. The uh, president will be elected first uh, after nominations for the president um, and a president is um, decided upon, the president will take over the meeting from that point. 
So nominations are now in order for the office of president. I nominate Lisa Hessel for president. Second. Um, I, I don't think you have to second. No. <laughs> no. Okay. But you can. But I'm waiting to see if there's any other nominations. If any of you would like to nominate any other person, you can do so at this time. All right. Hearing no other nominations, Lisa Hessel is nominated. Uh, and if there are there any other nominations for the office of president? Hearing none, I get to just say that she's the president now. Um, <laughs> motion to approve the nomination of Lisa Hessel for the office of president. So moved, Batson. Can I second that one? You can. Bernie second. There you go. And a roll call. And uh, we have Hessel. Aye. <laughs> Kulkarni. Aye. Rooney. Aye. Batson. Aye. Benjamin. Aye. Carmichael. Aye. Drumkey. Aye. The motion carries, and before I lose any power, by turning it over to President Hessel, I would like to say thank you for your leadership over the last two years, and I'm looking forward to another two years. Thank you very much. I am very fortunate and humbled, and I appreciate all of your support, and I could not do what I do without all of your support. Um, so thank you, and we will move things right along. Um, and I will ask um, if we have any nominations for board vice president, please. Michael, I nominate Jim Batson. Thank you. I didn't ask you. Is that okay? <laughs> Wait till I vote, and then. Yeah. <laughs> if you weren't going to nominate him, I certainly was. Do we have any other nominations before we vote? Okay, um, Jim Batson is nominated. May I have a motion to approve the nomination of Jim Batson for the office of vice president, please? Our Michael, so moved. Drumkey, second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Kulkarni. Aye. Rooney. Aye. Batson. Aye. <laughs> Benjamin. Aye. Carmichael. Aye. Drumkey. Aye. Hessel. Aye. Motion passes, and um, we are very lucky to have our most senior um, board member continuing in the role of vice president. So thank you, Jim not only for your service to um, this board, but to all of the previous boards and all the good you've done in both this district and Hawthorne uh, in your very long and distinguished tenure. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Um, sure, I go to my script. Um, I would like to ask for a motion to establish the provision that our board secretary serve without pay. Rooney, so moved. Batson second. Thank you. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Rooney. Aye. Batson. Aye. Benjamin. Aye. Carmichael. Aye. Drumkey. Aye. Hessel. Aye. Kulkarni. Aye. Motion passes. Um, now moving on. Um, I would like to ask for nominations for board secretary. I would like to nominate Don Carmichael for board secretary. Thank you, Don Carmichael is nominated. Do we have any other nominations? Can I please have a motion to approve the nomination of Don Carmichael for the Office of Secretary? Benjamin, I move to approve the nomination of Don Carmichael for the Office of Secretary. Rooney, second. Thank you, roll call please. Batson. Aye. Benjamin. Aye. Carmichael. Aye. Drumkey. Aye. Hessel. Aye. Kulkarni. Aye. Rooney. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you very much, John, for being willing to serve in your role as board secretary and chiefly as passer of signed documents to me to sign. <laughs> Which you're not going to do tonight. <laughs> Which I'm not going to do tonight, but normally we make a very good team. Yes, thank you. Okay, um, now I'm going to ask for a motion to designate a regular meeting time, place, and date for committee and board meetings. Um, this will be eerily similar to the one that we passed tonight at the uh, regular board meeting. Um, 
what I'm asking for is a motion to designate a regular meeting time, place, and date as the second Monday of every month in the Libertyville High School Library for the Program and Personnel Committee meeting and Facilities and Finance Committee meeting, and the fourth Monday of every month at Vernon Hills High School for the regular board meeting unless otherwise noted on the annual committee and board meeting schedule. Drumkey, so moved. Kulkarni, second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Benjamin. Aye. Carmichael. Aye. Drumkey. Aye. Hessel. Aye. Kulkarni. Aye. Rooney. Aye. Batson. Aye. Thank you. Motion passes. Um, now I will ask for a motion to designate the office of the <clears throat> secretary of the board as the administration center at 50 Lakeview Parkway Suite 101. Vernon Hills, Illinois 60061, Monday through Friday from the hours of 7.30 a.m. to, to 4 o'clock p.m. Are Michael so moved? That's in second. Roll call, please. Carmichael. Aye. Drumkey. Aye. Hessel. Aye. Kulkarni. Aye. Rooney. Aye. Batson. Aye. Benjamin. Aye. Motion passes. Um. Now I'll ask for a motion to appoint the superintendent to represent District 128 at the Lake County Technology Campus as a board member. Rooney, so moved. Drumkey, second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Drumkey. Aye. Hessel. Aye. Kulkarni. Aye. Rooney. Aye. Batson. Aye. Benjamin. Aye. Carmichael. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Moving on to school treasurer appointment. May I have a motion to re reaffirm the appointment of Daniel Stanley, Assistant Superintendent for Finance, to serve as a school treasurer? Benjamin, so moved. Rooney, second. Thank you. Roll call, please. No discussion. <laughs> <laughs> this better not be the one. You, this better not be the one you say no to. I know I'm ready to get home. Hessel. Aye. Cole Carney. Aye. Rooney. Aye. Batson. Aye. Benjamin. Aye. Carmichael. Aye. Drumkey. Aye. <laughs> and you only needed four, Dan, but yes, you got yeah. seven. Got the four. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, now for discussion, moving on to 6A, <laughs> I would like to um, propose that all the current chairpersons and representative remain as we had in our previous iteration. Um, is there anybody that would like to suggest a different uh, structure? I'm good with it. Thank you. I'm happy to continue. Excellent. Thank you. Um, may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. That's in second. Great. May I have a roll call voice, please? And my dog does not count in the <laughs> voice. <laughs> I was like, we voice vote. Voice oh, vote. we can do. Okay. Um, all in favor of adjournment, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you, friends. <laughs>